Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all London Racer games on the PS2. After the launch of the PS2, the video game franchise you never heard about, that was already prolific into making a truckload of games on Windows and the original PlayStation, came to the PS2 too. The franchise had different names depending on the country. In Germany the franchise got the name Autobahn Raza, in France it's called Paris Marseille Racing, and in the UK it got the name London Racer. I can tell you some general information about the games before getting into the details. They are low budget games. And you can see that. The controls are poor and the AI is stupid, the graphics look ok but the gameplay lacks good mechanics. The first game that came on the PS2 was Autobahn Raza FIA or 4, which is so bad it's fun. You will fly with your car on the map, fall out of the map, and you even get nitro so that you can mess around easier. There are 12 cars in the game and 11 tracks, and what is ironic for all of the titles is that they are misleading. The English version is called London Racer, when there are only 2 tracks set in London out of all of the 11. In Germany it's called Autobahn Raza, which means Highway Racer, and you don't really race on highways. And the French version is called Paris Marseille, and you don't even get Marseille as a raceable track. At least you can tune your vehicle, and you do it in the most uninteresting way. You just select on a scale from 1 to 5 how tuned you want your vehicle to be. The game is terrible, but it's so terrible it works. You have fun, you get time trials, exhibition races, and by doing cups you can unlock all of the 11 tracks in the game. London Racer 2 continues the tradition of the low budget franchise. It has the novelty of having introduced police cars in the game that chase after racers, but in rest, gameplay wise, it's the same game. The controls are as wonky as ever, you still get stuck easily if you don't drive carefully, and the game also introduces two types of co op multiplayer. This time, there are 12 cars in the game and 9 tracks. USA Racer or A2 Racer Ghost USA doesn't have any of the three titles of Autobahn Raza, London Racer or Paris Marseille Racing, but it's made by the same company and it's the same game in gameplay. It still has the same wonky controls, this time something is different. The game seems to be a little better optimized because I haven't gotten myself under the map or getting stuck into anything. Also some tracks seem to be recycled or retouched. They look better though. Others are completely new. Actually the majority are completely new. There are 11 tracks in the game and 12 cars. Also a minor detail I have noticed is that now when there's collision the game runs with slow motion. You have a slow motion camera when, when colliding into cars. Like some sort of crash cam. Even if the gameplay is the same, something about it makes it feel more medium budget, if that's a term. I mean, it feels less low budget than before. Maybe it's the better graphics and better optimized gameplay that make it feel better. London Racer World Challenge is a rearranged London Racer. The gameplay feels the same as the first London Racer games. Some tracks are recycled, others are new. You get 15 tracks and 21 cars. Each track now has different times of the day, but honestly, even if the game is different, it doesn't feel different. It's the old London Racer with multiplayer added and with some restructured career. Also minor difference is that when you sound your horn in this game, it doesn't sound distorted like in the other games. It just sounds lower. Autobahn Raza das Spiel zum Film is a movie tying game. Yes, for some reason, apparently, the franchise was popular enough to make a movie on it. So they made a video game after the movie that was after the video game. And they managed to keep the tradition of tie-in games being horrible. They already had the game formula. How could they screw up this one? They could have just copy pasted one of the previous games and call it a day. But instead, the game has only 4 tracks. You can race during the day, or night, or at dusk, but it doesn't help. There are still only 4 tracks in the game. 
at least there are 14 cars, many of them from the movie, and as for the gameplay, you play missions. Missions have some text that don't seem to be correlated to the movie. The menu looks like a poor Need for Speed imitation, but I think that the game is so far away from Need for Speed or any other good racing game, it, it's just sad. London Racer Destruction Madness changes the gameplay formula. This time the game isn't a racing game anymore, it's a deathmatch game. The content is impressive, you get 37 battle arenas and 27 cars. The gameplay on the other hand is not that great. There are 4 race types and neither of them is fun. You collect power-ups in each of them and power-ups are crap most of the time. The rocket out of your ass makes handling hard, the supercharger makes your car go crazy when you dare to turn and others are just either uninteresting or unuseful. One match type is a race with power-ups, another one is a classic deathmatch and another one is a classic deathmatch like you will get in Carmageddon. In my opinion, the game isn't good. The wonky controls aren't used well in the game. The power-ups are not good most of the time, the game just feels low budget. I didn't have that much fun with this one. The other ones, even if from a critic's standpoint, the game is mediocre, I had fun. But this one is just mediocre. Also you can't activate your horn in this one. Why would you remove features? London Racer Police Madness has one of the most stupid plots I've seen. You are a cop that has to arrest speeding vehicles. You have to prove to the government that you can catch criminals with slow cars so that they will use the fine money to buy an expensive car for you. As if the government will pay you for a supercar if you can do the job with a slow vehicle. Also, in this game you are a cop of one city. I mean, cops usually are belong to one city. You can't be an international cop, or can you? The maps are in different countries, which makes no sense to the plot. But even if the plot is nonsense, the gameplay is amazing. I mean, if we judge it objectively from the standpoint of a critic, the game is repetitive, lacks depth and lacks difficulty, but I'm human, I don't want to review games strictly on how they do on paper, if they, to see just if they have all the checks. I want to tell you how the game made me feel. Ok, so what you do in the game is drive behind cars and scan them. Most cars have done some bad stuff, so you have to arrest them. There are a couple of button quick time event mini games, and if you miss the buttons, then you start the police chase. During the chases you can use various weapons to shoot your target and stop the car. And aside of arresting people, you will also have to collect stuff on the map in a time limit. Whether it is that you collect food or secret files. There are 8 cars in the game and you can even equip them with different weapons. Because for exceeding the speed limit the penalty is death. Or for drunk driving or passing on a red light, you have to shoot the guy and stop him at all cost. And you even get a meter for reckless driving if you do this what you do to the criminals, to normal civilians, so some double standards here. And you can haunt the world on 6 tracks. I guess the guy you play as was fired multiple times and each time he faked his identity and got enrolled again in the police force of a different country, that's one explanation I can have to why you arrest people in different countries. Anyway. Even if on paper the game is bad and reviewers seem to agree with this that the game is terrible, I beg to contradict. I consider this game a hidden gem. I played this game with thirst for more. Sure, it's repetitive, but the core mechanics are fun. And isn't this what makes a video game great? How much fun you have in the game? Not how much, not how great it sounds on paper. I couldn't leave my hands off this game. I loved it. It feels like one of those games you will get with your cereal, and it has as much content as Crazy Taxi, and is almost as crazy as Crazy Taxi. And it's fun. I recommend you to try it, regardless of the bad reviews it got. Maybe you'll consider this game, like me, a hidden gem. Overall, I like the entire series. The wonky controls and the low budget feel of the game made it unique and stand out. The wonky physics were fun. 
I had fun flying around the maps. Sure, it can't compare to Gran Turismo or Need for Speed, but the game is still fun in its unique way. I don't encourage game companies to make such games, but I can't deny that I had a lot of fun playing this series. Each time I saw the crash physics, I was smiling. I felt good playing the games. And isn't this what video games should do to a player? Make him feel good? Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.